How about routines for hands-on activities and for manipulatives? These can be kind of tricky to manage. Um, keeping kids on task is especially difficult if you're doing the activity in a whole group. So you might want to consider doing manipulatives with small groups of students or to introduce them with you only having the set and showing the kids how to use them and then letting them go explore on their own. However, I do like having the whole class use manipulatives at once. I think it is a really good teaching technique. So I'm going to give you some tips for that here. If you have individual manipulative kits like these, um, you may or may not find that they work well for you. I've noticed that when I pass them out to students, they would have to open up the lid, dig through, find the one they need, put the lid back on, and then they have this big bulky container there on their little tiny student desk, and it was in the way. So it was much easier, I found, to spend an afternoon after school taking everything out and redistributing it so that all the counters were in two or three of the boxes, all the play money was in two or three of the boxes, etc. And then the math helpers can come up and just grab the two bins that have the play money and go pass out one bag to each child. That way they don't have that big bulky container there. Another year when I taught in a school that didn't have individual manipulative bins, I just used um, these bins that I got. I think I got this from Big Lots. It wasn't very much. It was about $30. And um, each container had a different type of manipulative. So my math helpers could just take the right bin and then go pass it out to students. The two rules that I had for manipulatives were don't touch the materials until the teacher gives a signal and when you hear the clicker, hands off. So students knew that when the math helpers gave them the manipulatives, they were supposed to sit there with their hands folded on their desk and not touch. And any time in the middle of the lesson when I used the clicker, which is just a little signal that I had, they knew to fold their hands instantly. No one was touching anything else. If they broke those rules, they knew that the consequence would be that they would lose their manipulatives. I wouldn't, usually I would not say a word. I might give a warning, but normally I just walk over, blank, emotionless face, not showing any anger, grab the manipulatives, go and put it on my desk, and keep right on teaching. And the child would just sit there for a few minutes without them. If he or she was able to handle that consequence without attitude, I'd give them back in a few minutes, walk over, put them right back on the desk, and they could pick up where they left off. But it was important to establish the expectation that when you're using manipulatives, it is a privilege and you need to do it the right way. If you're playing around with them, you're not going to be able to learn. So those were the two rules that I enforced. We also talked a lot about using versus playing with the materials. Um, a lot of times children want to make little designs with the manipulatives or they want to make sure everything is perfect. If you're using place value blocks, they try to line everything up just the right way. Well, I teach them that's playing with the materials. This is not an art project. We're supposed to be focusing on the math concept here. So your manipulatives should look like my manipulatives. If yours don't look like mine, then you're playing around with them. Now this is an obvious example of someone playing around with manipulatives. And I would show some funny examples like this to the kids to let them know um, examples and non-examples of what's expected. And um, if they did use the materials the right way during the entire lesson, then they knew that the last five minutes they'd be able to play with them and do fun things like this and use the materials any way that they wanted to. So there was a payoff for staying on task. But in general, my rule was your manipulatives should look like my manipulatives. I always had a set that I would project onto the board uh, with a document camera or before I had a document camera, I put little magnet strips on the back of manipulatives and stuck them to the board. So kids knew what to have on, in front of them because they could look at my example. Their manipulatives should look like mine. If they had different materials out, then they weren't following along and they were going to lose them. So I was very strict with the manipulatives because I want to make sure that kids are actually using them to learn math. When it's time for cleanup, set a timer. You may need a little bit more than three minutes, a little less, depending on the age of your students and the type of materials. But setting a timer will kind of move things along a lot more quickly. And make sure that you have a place for kids to put random pieces that they find. Uh, invariably, there will be one or two pieces left over on the floor. So have a container that's always in one place where the kids know if they find something on the floor, go put it over there in that container. And then once a month or so, your math helpers can go and get those things out and distribute them back into the places where they belong.